Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Larry Lursey. You know, I do a bunch of videos on Luminar Neo. I love the software. I use it all the time in my own workflow. But there are some things that you can do that are little tips that help it to work a little better or help you to get a little better results. So what I'm going to do today is show you five things you can do to get the best results possible out of Luminar Neo. I hope it's going to help you. Without any further ado, let's jump right into that intro. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. Before we even jump into Luminar, I'm gonna show you tip number one, and that is always to work on a separate layer. Um, I don't, I, you know, I've got two layers here. Uh, below is the basic image, and up here is all the work I've done to it. I don't wanna do my Luminar on this layer because if I end up not liking it, I've lost all this work as well. So first thing I'm gonna do is make a copy of that layer, and I'm gonna name this one, uh, I'll just put, Luminar Neo, uh, just to remind me that that's what is going to be on this layer right here. And having it on its own layer accomplishes many things. Uh, but as I said before, if you decide you don't like it, it's easy just to get rid of that layer. If you decide you like it, but you just did a little too much, you can play with the opacity. You can even change with the blending mode. A lot you can do having it on its own layer. So I'm just going to call that Luminar Neo and then uh, make sure I've got that layer selected and jump into the software. Okay, so now that we're in the software, let's go over here, hit edit. Over here, we've got all of our filters and things that we can use. And there's a lot of them. It can be very overwhelming. And so the first thing I want to show you is how to set up favorites. And a lot of times you're going to find, once you've been using the software for a while, you've got certain ones that you tend to use on just about every image. So um, for example here, uh, I use the uh, develop a lot. What you can do is you can right click or control click and put add to favorites. I use enhance a lot. Structure, again, I'm control clicking on the Mac or a right click on a PC. And I'm just adding the ones that I use all the time. Um, I will use dramatic a lot. the face. By doing that, now up here I've got all these at the top under favorites. So when I bring up a new image right here, I've got the ones that I use the most right up at the top. And um, I can certainly go down and grab some of the others, but if these are the ones that I use on every uh, portrait or most images, then it's nice to have them all together. And so that favorites tab is a great way of just kind of organize, moving them all to the top. You can still come down here and grab some of these other ones. You decide you want film grain, whatever. It's easy to add more to the favorites if you decide, you know what, I'm not really using um, super contrast anymore. Same thing, remove from favorites. Just control click or right clicking it. And you can edit this favorite list however you want. You can even do it from project to project. If you're working on a project that uh, you know is going to have a bunch of atmosphere in it and sky replacements, and uh, you might want to have those in your favorites. If you're working with portraits, for example, you may not want a sky replacement for a studio portrait. So you can kind of change these favorites really easily. So it's a really nice time-saving thing to have all those right up there. Third tip is the histogram. And you'll see up here, I've got my histogram uh, above up here, but it's not always up here. You have to turn it on. And if you don't have your histogram turned on, I think that's something you want to make sure and do. And all you have to do, it's very easy to just come up here to view, show histogram. Make sure that that is checked. So I can turn it off and it disappears. But just come down, show histogram. And that way you will always have it up here. You can also access it here under develop. If you come down here to curves, you're gonna see that histogram there as well. But uh, if you want to just always have it up here at the top, that's your tip. Make sure that you've got that turned on right up here under view. Okay, for tip number four, let's go in and use the dramatic as an example and let's pump this all the way up so we can really see what's happening. All right, there's the before and the after. Let's say that we really like what it's done to him, but we don't like what it's done to the background. It's bringing too much attention to the background, for example. Uh, we know we can come into masking, select a brush, uh, 
bring the strength down a little bit here and we can here in paint we can come through here and paint him and we will get that effect on him but not the background as we will see here in a second let's do a little bit all right if we do the before and the after here you can see there's the before there's the after it's only affecting him it's not affecting the background uh, however, if when I was doing this painting, I got a little sloppy and I came over here onto the side and now it's affecting this piece right here, what you would do, of course, is come back to erase and you'd come back and erase here a couple of times and then maybe you come in too far on the neck there, so you switch back to paint like that. Well, what you can do is you can use the X key to switch between paint and erase. So if we're on paint here, and I go through and paint these arms and decide to go too far over there, I just hit the X. Now I'm back in erase mode. Come through, clean up wherever it is. Oops, I'll leave it on there. Erase it out as much as I want. If I decide, well, I didn't get enough on that spot, hit X, switch back to paint. You can see over here, it's just every time I hit X, it's just moving me back and forth. So it's really nice if you're going through trying to mask something or apply some sort of effect and you're worried that you're switching back and forth too much, coming over here every time you just hit that X button. Pretty easy one. And for tip number five, well, there's, I'm actually going to give you a bonus tip after tip number five, but but for tip number five, we're going to talk for a second about presets. And I know you're probably aware of all the presets and how great they are. And it's a wonderful one-stop shop way to just hit something you go through and, and look at the different ones that they have. Uh, decide what you like. Pick the fashionista. And it goes ahead and applies it. And that is all well and good. But what a lot of people don't realize is you can go through and you can still make changes and let's say you love this fashionista look, but you don't like uh, maybe what it did to the face or something, for example. You can come in here under Edit. So we've got all of our options over here, and you'll see next to Edit, Edits up here at the top, there's a little dot. And that tells us that these are all the things that that preset did. And so let's say you don't like what it did to his skin. You can come here under the skin, see exactly what it did. And if you don't like that, you can just right here, reset the tool. The skin effects are gonna go away. You can look through the rest. See, we can go on on skin now and it's all gone. You can decide, uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't like what it did to the body. Let's see what it did to him. And it slimmed him up a little bit. Let's say he's a football player, he doesn't want to get slimmed up. I can go ahead, get rid of that as well. Whatever it is you want to do, you could even add your own things to it. You could go in at that point after you've done all that and you say, well, I actually want to add grain to it or something. You could come in under film grain, add a bunch of grain to it. Well, we are really destroying this image. Let's pretend it's looking better. But we go through, add some more film grain. Okay, now that's the look we really like. We can go in and save that preset. So we've basically taken that fashionista, but we've given it a more grungy type thing. So we can save that preset, come up to my presets and call that, you know, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Fashion seven, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Hit apply. And now we've created another preset that we can use whenever we recreate that same look. So if this guy has a, a different pose, like he loves that look, but don't like that pose, that's a way to use a preset, but you're not having to start from scratch on the preset. You can go through and kind of find one that's close to what you want and then go in and edit it as uh, your tip for that. And to get to the bonus tip, let's go ahead and apply this. All right, so back in Photoshop, what you want to remember to do is go back to this layer and add that to it. What do we call it? Fashion 7. So I've got Loom Neo Fashion 7. So if a year down the road I bring this image back, how did I get that look? I know that it was in Neo using preset Fashion 7. And again, we've got it on its own layer here where we can turn it off, go back to the original image. Um, we can fade back and forth between them, uh, whatever we want to do. 
So that's your little bonus tip right there is renaming that layer. But those tips will definitely help you streamline your workflow just a little bit. Okay, so there are your five tips. I'm sure you've got some tips that I left out. Leave them in the comments. Let's help each other out. Uh, maybe you can give me some ideas uh, of some things that you found really help you to streamline your workflow when you're using that software. If this helped, please take a second to like the video and I hope you'll subscribe. Make sure you ring the bell so that you get notifications of new videos. It really does help me and I would sure appreciate it. But that's all for this video. I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.